Welcome to our lecture online and in our next video we're going to talk about Amontan's law. That law involves again the ideal gas equation. In this case we're going to leave the volume constant. So we devise some constant volume thermometers. Again we can set that up with some mercury to make sure that the volume remains constant allowing the uh, allowing the pressure to increase and decrease with changing temperatures but not changing the volume. And of course if we then assume that the volume is constant we can move the V over to the other side of the equation, lump it up with the other two variables that are constant, well the variable could not be constant but with the number of moles and of course the gas constant right there and moving the temperature to the left side so on the left side we have variables that change, on the right side we have uh, variables that do not change, they're constant, and so therefore we can write that P over T is always going to be equal to a constant, so therefore we can write that P1 T1, the pressure and the temperature of a gas in its initial state, equal the ratio of P2 over T2, the pressure and the temperature of the gas in the final state. If we then solve that for the final pressure, that is going to be equal to the initial pressure times the ratio of the new temperature over the old temperature. In other words, if you double the temperature but keep the volume the same, you will double the pressure. If you triple the temperature, keep the volume the same, you will triple the pressure and so forth. Again, they did this experiment where they measured the pressure of a gas at a particular temperature, let's say 100 degrees centigrade, and then they measured the pressure again of the same gas with the same volume but now at a different temperature and they got a different pressure. When they put that on the PT diagram like that, they got a straight line just like we have in y equals mx plus b. And then if they extrapolated that through to colder and colder temperatures, even if they theoretically, even they in a practical sense could not achieve that in an experiment, if they did it through a theoretical experiment saying what if we extrapolate this curve down, they would hit the zero pressure point at a temperature of minus 273.15 Kelvin. That was again an amazing discovery and they said wow that is that is amazing so if we continue to cool down a gas eventually we get to zero pressure at this particular temperature. What if they changed the volume of the gas? They took the same volume, um, made it smaller so we increased the temperature so now that the pressure would be there instead of here and let's use a different color for that so what if we uh, reduce the volume so the pressure would be greater and then we measured at 100 degrees centigrade and then we measure that again at zero degrees centigrade, the pressure would be somewhere down here. And if we connected those two lines, and again, if we extrapolated that through, eventually we got back down to zero pressure at a temperature of minus 273.15. So that would be at volume one, this would be at volume two. If they then allow a, a smaller volume uh, at volume three, actually, if the pressure is uh, smaller, that would be greater volume, so volume 3 would be bigger than volume 1 or volume 2. And again, the temperature would look like this between 100 and 0 degrees, but if we extrapolate that all the way down to zero pressure, again, we came down to the same temperature. So very, for various volumes of the gas, we varied the pressure and the temperature, and again, we would get zero pressure at minus 273.15 Kelvin, which then be, uh, ooh, not Kelvin, is of course degrees centigrade and then of course we ex extrapolated out and said let's call that the coldest temperature we can have in the universe zero Kelvin and relate everything to that and that's where the Kelvin scale came from that along with the other ways in which we measured this extrapolation so those are the that's the third of the three laws of a uh, of the PV equals NRT equation, the ideal gas equation, and now we're going to show you some examples of how to utilize these laws and how to utilize the PV equals NRT equation in our next videos.